You might have heard that English has five or maybe six vowels, but that's actually wrong. The English alphabet has five or six vowels, but the English language actually has between 12 to 20 vowels depending on the analysis. On the other hand, Spanish actually does have only five vowels. And today, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about how vowels work. Now this video is actually the second part in a three-part series about the International Phonetic Alphabet. So if you don't understand all the strange symbols I've been putting over here, be sure to check out the first part of this series, which I will link to up here. Now, the vowel chart I've been showing you actually represents the physical shape of the inside of your mouth. And the position of each symbol in the chart represents the position of your tongue within your mouth when you make that sound. So for example, when you say E, your tongue is high and forward. When you say U, it's high and back. And when you say A, it's low and forward. So the placement of your tongue actually changes the sound waves as they leave your mouth. Notice that when you make a vowel, your tongue might move all around, but it never really restricts the passage of air. In contrast, consonant sounds actually do disrupt the flow of air through your mouth. So when you make a D sound, your tongue actually closes off your vocal tract for just a fraction of a second. That's the main difference between a vowel and a consonant. And in the next video in this series, we're gonna talk all about how consonants work. Now, as far as vowels go, when we're describing tongue position, we divide the mouth into three vertical sections and three horizontal sections with some subsections in between. So the vertical height of your tongue is divided into low, mid, and high. Sometimes you might also hear the terms open vowel and closed vowel, which just means the same thing as low and high because as your tongue raises in your mouth, it starts to close off the air passage. But for this video, I'm just gonna to refer to them as high, mid, and low. And then as far as backness goes, we divide the mouth into front, central, and back. And these are the terms that we use to describe vowels when we're talking about them. So for example, the vowel a ah would be called a low back vowel. The vowel u would be a high front vowel. The schwa is a mid central vowel. And this vowel is pronounced u, and we don't have it in English, but it's very common in the Thai language, for example. So can you figure out what we would call it based on its position on this chart? It's a high back vowel, just like the vowel U. Now for vowel height, we also have high mid vowels and low mid vowels. The vowel U is a high mid back vowel, and the vowel E is a low mid front vowel. Now the symbols you see on this chart are just point markers. Your tongue can actually slide seamlessly between any of them. So we also have modification symbols in the IPA, which mean the vowel is slightly more forward, slightly higher, slightly back, or slightly lower. So in this vowel, the tongue is slightly higher than in this one and this vowel would be slightly further back than this one. And to tell you the truth, I can't even really pronounce the difference between those. So maybe this one would be ah, and this one would be ah, or something like that. But I don't know, <laughs> I can't really do it. But it's not that big of a deal because you probably won't ever run into these symbols unless you're getting into some pretty specific phonology stuff. So don't worry about it too much. Just know that these symbols are out there. Now, the tongue is not the only important factor that affects the sound waves of your vowels. The shape of your lips is also really important. For example, listen to the difference between these two vowels. E, 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 E. The only difference between them is the roundedness of my lips. So E would be a rounded vowel and E is an unrounded vowel. And anytime you see a pair of vowels on this chart, it's always an unrounded and a rounded version of the same tongue position. And roundedness is an important part of the description of every vowel. So E would be called a high front unrounded vowel and E would be a high front rounded vowel. U, the vowel from Thai that I mentioned earlier, is a high back unrounded vowel. So can you figure out what U is? 
It's a high back rounded vowel. Now, roundedness is not binary. There's a spectrum between unrounded and rounded. So the IPA also comes with some symbols that mean more or less rounded. But again, these symbols are pretty rare and we usually just refer to vowels as either rounded or unrounded. Another feature of some vowels is nasalization. And if you don't know what that is, just think of the stereotypical French laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're doing when you pronounce a nasal vowel is that you're opening the velum in the back of your throat so that some air can escape through your nose. Nasal vowels are spelled with a little tilde over them, so this would be a low back, unrounded nasal vowel. But nasalization is not essential to every vowel description, so this is just normally referred to as a low back, unrounded vowel. And you don't always need to specify that it's not nasalized. Vowels are not nasal by default. Another important feature to be aware of is vowel length. You've probably heard of the terms long vowel and short vowel before, but be careful because a lot of us were taught by English teachers who didn't use these terms in the technical sense. Like they might have said that E is a long vowel and E is a short vowel, but that is not the way linguists use these terms. In linguistics, when we use the term long vowel or short vowel, we're actually talking about temporal length or the amount of time that it takes to pronounce a vowel. If you're a native English speaker, you might not even notice this, but you naturally hold certain vowels longer when they're in some words as opposed to others. For example, most people pronounce the vowel in the word beat for around 190 milliseconds, but the vowel in the word bead is held for usually around 350 milliseconds. That's almost twice as long. And in order to show that difference in the IPA, we put these two little triangles next to a long vowel. But short vowels don't get any kind of special marking unless it's an extra short vowel, which looks like this. I've also heard that in some dialects of Australian English, vowel length can be phonemic, meaning it can be the only difference between two separate words. So for example, in the case of these two words, Fairy would be the boat, and fairy would be the fantasy creature. And then the same would be true for cut and cot, although I am not a native speaker of Australian English. So if you are familiar with that dialect, please let me know if I got that right. Another thing that's really, really important to know about vowels is something called diphthongs, or sometimes I've heard them called diphthongs. Every symbol on this chart represents what we call a monothong, meaning that they're just simple, individual vowel sounds. That's contrasted with the diphthong, which is a combination of two vowel sounds that glide together. I already mentioned that the symbols on this chart are just point markers. So when we pronounce diphthongs, our tongue slides between that space from one point to another. And very often, a language will treat that whole process as a single phoneme rather than as two individual ones. So the word cow has two phonemes, not three. In theory, you could make a diphthong out of any pair of these vowels, or you could even make a triphthong out of any three. But the main five ones in English are I, ow, a, oi, and o. So with that knowledge, try to figure out what this sentence spells in IPA. I'll give you a second to pause the video, and if you've already figured it out, the answer is no highway for a cowboy. Now, when we're talking about consonants, there's a whole different set of factors we need to consider in order to understand how those sound waves are made. So check out this video to learn more about that. If you want to see more videos about basic linguistics or the best practices for learning a new language, be sure to follow this channel, and I'll see you guys next time.